Hey guys, my name is Ryan. And my name is Miska. And welcome to Overwatch Central. So we've made videos in the past called the likes of Reaper is back and Tracer is back. These videos specifically focus on a certain hero that had a huge impact way back when, but for some reason fell out of favour and then back in, we talk about why this may be the case and the sort of health of that particular hero. And when we spoke about Reaper and Tracer in previous iterations of this video, one of the top comments that we'd get is, well, they never really went anywhere. How can they be back if they never went anywhere? With the likes of Reaper, and Tracer, their pick rate essentially was zero in the pro scene and was very similar in the high GM top 500 plays as well. But in this instance with Zarya, you'd be somewhat right with saying that Zarya hasn't really gone anywhere. She hasn't become an invalid pick or really out of favour in particular, but considering the kind of hero that she is, she sets up plays, is all about game sense and is an incredibly strong hero, she took a major backseat for multiple reasons. With her minute yet effective buff, we wanted to go over the main reason why Zarya is going to be a huge hero for season 6 and beyond talk about why she's fallen out of favour in particular and also give a few tips at the end of this video just in case you want to learn this hero because I'm telling you she's gonna be major from now on. As Ryan said, Zarya's pick rate hasn't fallen or dwindled like previous heroes we've covered in this fashion. Reaper and Tracer went all the way down to 0% pick rate in esports level games and has also seen very little usage in the competitive ladder as well. Nowadays both are viable picks that can be placed in most forms of teams. Zarya was viable, still yet became an out of meta pick for a few reasons. The first being that D.Va stole the off tank spot from her. With the amount of damage thrown around and the speed at which heroes can kill their dive target, it came as no surprise that D.Va was a much better suited diver than Zarya. D.Va has low cooldown on her mobility with her jetpacks and can boop and then melee targets for some quick easy damage. D.Va's damage up close isn't that terrible either. Zarya has no movement abilities either, so she can't really dive the enemy in the same way with her team. However, the main issue is how long it takes for Zarya to build up her shield to do damage. Sarya is a consistent DPS hero that can put out a lot of damage if she can manage her shields properly. Off the bat, Sarya just simply couldn't kill her targets straight away. There's no fast initial burst, she has to build it over time. And this means that even D.Va is just more effective. Hence why she fitted better into the dive meta. Overall, D.Va has more consistent results than Sarya with DPS and damage mitigation. However, Sarya is starting to come back in a big way. I think it's really unfair to say that the buff to Zarya's ultimate made any real difference and this is the reason why we've seen a return. I'd say that the change was more for consistency and quality of life. The same could be said for the likes of McCree and Reinhardt and their pick rate has also increased, so it's a bit of an interesting thing that's happened with all three of these heroes. We've spoken about dive losing its majority in another video, but ultimately I do feel that it's more sheer force of will than any particular balance change. Players wanted something different to dive and when these changes came in, the likes of Reinhardt and Zarya came back in a big way. We've Doomfist on the verge of competitive play next week, the synergy between him and Zarya seems to be well in the pipeline for future compositions. Regardless of how good Doomfist is going to be, he is going to be played a lot in competitive, so expect that. But Zarya ultimately is a worrisome hero for a few reasons, as when she's in the meta she tends to dominate it and it becomes very hard to move her out of it. The only reason she was out of it this time is that she's not very mobile and D.Va was so much better. It's nice to see her rejoin the viable heroes in a healthy way, Blizzard were really clever with how they went about these changes, it wasn't a, oh D.Va's really strong right now, let's nerf her, oh no Zarya's in the top spot for off tank now. D.Va wasn't touched, and Zarya with this minute change has slowly crawled her way back into high competitive tiers, and just in case you don't believe as Omnic Meta's latest report shows that Zarya's pick rate has increased in the higher tiers as you've seen on screen. Maybe players were bored and wanted to bring Zarya back into competitive play for those big ultimates and to counter D.Va to an extent, or maybe those buffs actually did make that much of a significant difference. Either way, do expect the Russian to be back in working order, especially from next Tuesday when Doomfist hits competitive. Sorry is one of the few heroes that we haven't actually done a master guide on, so to finish this video off we wanted to give some decent tips for those that may be on the fence about playing her. There's also a great info dump of guides and VOD reviews from user CanAsian that we can recommend in the comments below. Also do check out one amongst the many VOD reviews on Sorry as well, they're really really solid material. Anyway moving on to talk more about Sorry in particular, with her shield management we like the thought process of using your own shields for gaining shield charge primarily, throw yourself into incoming damage to 
quickly buffer up your charge, and at the same time, use your shield on your allies to protect them and save them from dangerous situations that could mean death for them otherwise. Don't try and shield your teammates to selflessly gain charge as A, it may not work as well as you think, and B, you may have a very important ability available when you actually need it, when you could actually have saved someone. Remember that the left click ability does more damage on a single target than the right click does as well. You only want to be right clicking if you can't see the target and want to spam a choke or doorway, or if there are multiple enemies grouped up, so you can deal that same damage to multiple people. As far as aggression goes, it is important to remain in the face of the enemy at all times or at least as much as you possibly can, and this can be a Saria's biggest challenge. Learning between what is safe with consistently poking the enemy for ult charge and shield charge as well, whilst not over committing and getting yourself killed is a very fine balance. A lot of people on the ranked ladder as well, especially in lower tiers, tend to more often forget about leaving a high charge Saria, giving her a good opportunity to dish out a lot of damage while she is on top already, so do take advantage of that when you can, as it's pretty easy to spot if a Saria is high charge or not. Also, as far as maps go, King's Row is an amazing map for Saria because of how flat the map is overall. Saria has a big weakness with uneven ground because of her mobility, so do make sure to watch out for that one, and if you have more vertical maps, maybe consider another hero. And that's it for this time, thank you very much for watching, do let us know what you think of Zarya, whether you feel these changes have done a lot for her, or do you think the players have just wanted to bring her back over time. Let us know if you play a lot of Zarya, what you're expected to do with the hero, and whether you're excited to see her back in competitive play at the higher tiers, and until next time, take care, we'll see you then.